So, I, so and, and what was the end of the story was that the king called them both. And the time, I'm not going to get into why the king called them, but the time he got all excited and he ran away, ran to the king. The king called, so you go. I mean, I mean, it seems very posh like that, but listen to what the Chacham said. Who says there's a king? Did you ever see him? He says, he says to the messenger, did you ever see him? I mean, that's, that's every, everything you have to look for a Chacham. You can't just, just they called you, so go. What's the big thing? Ooh, they're giving you a wagon to go, so why not go? Who said you ever saw the king? How do you know there is a king? Until the end was that the home sank in the ground and nothing came out of him. And the time went higher and higher and higher until he became the, the Mishnah of my life. Now, I, I would say this one of the biggest studies in Br that the wrestler Rebbe said, taught, which is very inspiring. I find it very, very inspiring. And I find it as an answer. To, to certain problems in life, in certain situations that you come up with. The Pshat was like this. I, I went to, the, to, the, to a few different yeshivas, and I was also in the mirror. I saw this one is better, this one is better, this one. I mean, I, 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 when I was, I'm very sorry that I'm talking about myself, I, but, but I have no choice. When I was before Bar Mitzvah, I already learned through the whole Masech, the Chul, and Gemara Rashi. And, and not, not just that I learned, I didn't even know there's something special about doing that. What was the problem? You open up a Gemara and you learn. Before Bar Mitzvah then, and right after Bar Mitzvah, I learned through Shabbos. And I still remember the Gemara from that time. So then, and I, yet, I went to him and I said, this one knows better, and this one knows better. What does, he, what does he know better? He knows how to ask and answer and argue and say, and, and be Matsyar other people in the dining room. And this, and what, what, what do they know? And, and, and I went to Rab Nochum's and, and I didn't understand anything because I, uh, I didn't know how good you have to prepare. And everybody else, everybody understood. Everybody knew how to, to you know, so, so, so then I ate my heart out. So, on that came along the breast of Rabbi and he said, what do I care about others? Zema se shaliva, zema ase shalom. That's tamimus. That's what we call tamimus. And that's an answer to all kinds of situations in life. I would say the definition of tamimus is look at what you have here and don't look at the outside. Be be in your own Daladamas, in your own square. There's a Pasik says, Al Yaitse Ishmim Kamu Bayoma Shvi. And the Gemara says that goes on Daladamas. Daladamas of Upper. Don't go out of your place on the Yoma Shvi on Shabbat. Shabbos is the Pshat. I just thought of this now. Shabbos is the Pshat that we're we're we're, we're going out of Alamaza. The, 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 olam, the main Olam Haba is Hashem is bringing down the main Olam Haba into this world. And what is it, the main Olam Haba? Al Yitzhishmim come with Mashri. Know that you have your tafkid. And Hashem has nachas ruach from you, from what you do. And it doesn't matter. The whole world doesn't matter. As big as they are, as big, big Rosh Hashimahs, nothing matters. You did your avoda, and that's it. That's called tamim. Tamimus means be in this what you're doing. Be here, here. I remember my son Yosef, when he was standing under the chupa. So they were machabit somebody with a broch. His name was Erez Gazit. Machabit him with a broch. He was uh, somebody that Yosef had that had to do with him. He went to learn Kuzri with him and other things. And Beitar, so he came up, he came up to say his bracha, so he whispered into the Chosen's ear, Yosef, Achshav mitratnim. Two words. 
<laughs> what did he mean? That, I think what he meant is be be here what you're doing. Don't think of anything else. Now we're getting married. We're making a bruch on, on, on the chasm. And you should know it's an avoda of years and years and years. And that's what to me means. You're learning at Toshis, be here in the Toshis, be, be there with it. Now, there are Bali children and that type that make a big mistake and they think that Tmimis means not Chochmis. Be act as if your brain is stopped up. Don't, don't think too much. Anything has to do with thinking, just leave it. <laughs> be me to a town. Go to the cave of the Nanach. <laughs> that's what Tamimus means. And, and, and that's wrong. Tamimus is a deep, deep chokhmah, very deep chokhmah. You have to have be a chokhmah. You have to be smart to know how to use Tamimus. They say, I think, B'Shem de Kotzke, Yaakov Ish Tom. Ish means the Abaili, my owner. And you find that in places, Ish Nomi. The Pshat is, he was a Baile, he had a meat of Tumimis, and, and, and he knew how to use it. It was like a Kaili that's called Tumimis, and he used it the right way, he knew how to use it. Tumimis does not mean stupidity, and does not mean to put blinders next to your eyes, and not to see anything like a horse that goes in the street. You don't want him to see cars, so they put blinders on the two sides of that. It's not what the Bresta Rebbe didn't mean to me, miss. He didn't mean blinders of a horse. That's not what he meant. I still remember when we first came to Eretz Yisrael, there was a horse and wagon, and he used to see in Gula with somebody, a Satmar Chosi, he lived on Rechov, uh, what was it called? Rechov Hoshea, maybe. Oh, what was his name? Uh, he had a horse and wagon, and he used to take soda water and stuff. Where did he keep the horse? I don't know. <laughs> and and the horse went into it. So he took the horse in the street in Gula, and the horse had blinders like this. Because if he'll see the cars, he'll get scared. So that's the best of Rebbe meant to be a horse. <laughs> and uh, it's stupid. Every memory that you hear the Rebbe said, you need you need seichel to understand how to use it. So when the Rebbe said to me, Miss, that's what he meant. Be be in what you're doing and don't look around. You're learning a Tosfos. You should know this Tosfos. This is Vayera Hashem Al Har Sinai, and he taught this Tosfos. Look at it like that. Don't look at it like. Don't even think about what it's going to do to me. Don't even think about that. Be like Shakur, like he looked. When, when it says he's Tachel Barai Shabaram, Hashem looked at the turn and created the world, he meant this Tosus. As, as simple as it might look, or it might not look so long, this year, where Tosus talks about why, why, why it says that a Sukkah Lamal Master is kosher, Adar Boim Bachamishim Amo. So in the beginning of Sukkot, the Beis Amit Beis, Tosus talks about why does it say Adar Boim Bachamishim. He said, hey, what's the difference of my mission? They talked, they said, so this, this is Torah that came down from our sin, and why it says, I'm going by Hamish. Tosis brings all kinds. You can't become a Rosh Shiva from this Tosis, and you can't become a Magichir, and you can't, all kind, you can't get COVID from it. But, but, to me, it says that this is Torah that came down from our sin. Nothing else. And this, these few minutes, nothing else. There was that guy that used to come to a, a big, a big some America. He was with, uh, in the 60s. Richard Alpert, he changed his name to Ram Das. And he used to come uh, to Breslau, to Shala Shudas. Yeah, I remember that name, I remember. Ram Das, and his big bestseller slogan was, Be Here Now. Oh. <laughs> And, and, and it sounds so Our simple. friend Brooke Gardner was Makar of him a little bit. To you? No, I was tried. I don't know how. So, so it sounds so simple. 
Yeah, that, that simplicity is, is a big, is I have heard of years and years and years. Now, I think this is such a strong issue, and it, it seems to me, I, I don't know of any other safer that emphasized it as much as the Bressler Rebbe. And it's very easy to take it the wrong way. Now, another another Nakuda is the Yiddish another Nakuda within the union of Tunimus is the Yiddish Kate itself to to do to do what we do without thinking why we do it. Now I'm gonna give an example which which happened to me one time. Like there were some uh, teenagers in, in my family, nephews of mine, or my son and and his cousins, nephews, that they would start saying, why can't you eat kidney and some Pesach? Nowadays, you know, everybody knows the difference between kidneys and wheat, and you don't make flour. I don't know, all kinds of things. So I said like this, I mean, I'm not going into what, what bothered them is not so important because you could always answer very easily. But I'm, what I'm saying is like this. We don't eat kidneys because we follow what our ancestors did. To me, it's empshitas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it, maybe sometimes we do put blinders on the side of our eyes. We, we follow what our ancestors did. And maybe it has to do, it has a lot to do with Pesach. Pesach is when the first generation of Klai Yisrael became, became B'nai Chorin. And we want to continue, connect to them. And we do like they did that. We don't need kidneys. They didn't need kidneys? <laughs> no. Well, let's say it better. <laughs> Our ancestors in Europe, in Europe, we, we want to continue, we want to oh, belong to, to Avos Avosenu, that they lived in ghettos in Europe, and, and, and we, and we want to continue that Yiddishkeit, and not be as if we have, we live now in an open world, we have computers, we have cell phones, we have iPhones, we have all kinds of chachmas and connections with Arbat Kanfazars. Exactly against being here now. And being there now. Oh, oh, very good. We want to just continue that line. They didn't need kidneys and we don't want to, and we're connecting to them. So I think that they're not eating kidneys, it's connecting to our ancestors. It, it's, it's to me, it's, it's being, it's being, what, what am I? I'm, I'm a descendant of them. And Let me ask you a question. Do what they're doing. What? Let me ask you a question. It says somebody is not so good at Torah. Ad she mekia takalav she neik mishteimo. We have to break off. We have to be. Very good. Tell me, be. Wow, you should be asking good. Ad she, ad she he'll be mekia takalav she neik mishteimo. Pshat is like this. I'll tell you. The answer is there's a goof and there's a neshama. That means mitzad the goof, you have to be meki chol of shonag mishtemo. But we're talking about the neshama, the neshama is like a branch, it's like a leaf on a branch of a tree that, that goes all the way back. That's the Dora Chaim, and you remember Dora Chaim, the beginning of Parshas, Korach. And he says, Korach ben Yitzha ben Kos ben Levi, that the neshama comes from a zionic from a a branch and the branch is yonic from the tree and that. So Yaakov Vinu said, I don't want to be the Sharish where Karach is yonic from. We're talking Mitzad the Neshama, but Meki Cholof Shionik Mishtaimu, that's Mitzad the Goof. That's my, yeah, that's the answer to your question. Anyway, so I'm saying that's another union of Tamimas to do things. Now, when it comes to learning, you have to learn with the full chokhmah. And that goof is to me, because Rosh Hashem is, you should be mishakim in learning. You should go deep, you should understand, you should know why they made the gzair of kidneys, and you should know all this. When it comes to my semitras, you have to do it with to me. That's another point. And I'm not going to be married, I could talk a lot more on it, but we don't have so much time. 
But I wanted to say a third point. Ah, Robert Kaplan, we'll take a break now. Thank you.